Hi everyone, in this lesson we are multiplying a whole number by a decimal and then a decimal by a decimal. First part, it says whole number by a decimal. Multiply the values traditionally. So however you learned how to multiply your values, I'm going to show you the traditional method. That's how you can multiply them together. But then determine the total number of place values that are after the decimal point in your factor and place the decimal in that location in your product. It's a mouthful, but here's what the deal. If I want to do 14 times 3.12, right, 14 times 3 and 12 hundredths, I'm going to stack them in a way so that the number that has more place values, that I see more values, I see two place values here, I see three place values here all together. I'm going to stack the one with the larger amount of place values on top. So 3.12 times 14. Now we know that we could do that because you can multiply in either order. It's commutative. I'm going to do my traditional multiplication. So 4 times 2 is 8, and then 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. Then when I shift over to multiply everything by 1, I'm going to put my placeholder 0. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 1 is 1. And 1 times 3 is 3. Then we know what we go ahead and we add these. So 8 plus 0 is 8, 4 plus 2 is 6, 2 plus 1 is 3, 1 plus 3 is 4. But what I do is I check to see how many places after the decimal was in this one factor that I was multiplying by. 1, 2. So that means two places into my answer, 1, 2, I'm going to place that decimal. So my answer would then be 43.68. Same thing for the next one, 17.895 times 6. I'm going to stack these with my larger amount of place values on top of the smaller. I'm going to do my traditional multiplication. 6 times 5 is 30, bring down the 0, carry the 3. 6 times 9 is 54, plus 3 is 57, bring down the 7, carry the 5. 6 times 8 is 48, plus 5 is 53, bring down the 3, carry the 5 above the 7. 6 times 7 is 42, plus 5 is 47. Carry the 4, and I end up getting 10, and look what I did here. There's three places after the decimal in the, ants, in the factor here. So in my product, I go three places after the decimal here. Now, when the final number in your answer is a 0, 0 0.370 is the same as just 0.37. I do not need to leave that zero at the end. In fact, it's not as simplified as I want it to be. Both of these values mean the same thing, but this would be the most simplified answer. So notice all that's happening here. I'm multiplying them traditionally, and then I'm checking to see how many places are after the decimal, one, two. So in my answer, I should have the same number of places, one, two. In the next problem, there was three places after the decimal, one, two, three. And so take a look in my answer here, it was one, two, three before I simplified it. And that's why there's only two in my final answer. So now for practice, I'm going to go through the top five and then I'm gonna ask for you to do the bottom five on your own and then go ahead and check your answers, okay? So let's take a look here together. Two times 8.65, I put 8.65 on top times two. I do my traditional multiplication. Two times five is 10, so bring down the zero, carry the one. Two times six is 12, plus one is 13, carry the one. Two times eight is 16, plus one is 17. There's two places that, the, that are after the decimal, so I should have two places after the decimal in my answer. However, when the zero is at the very end, we can basically just remove that and call it 17.3. Next one, 2.777 times 3. Okay, 3 times 7 is 21. Bring down the 1, carry the 3, the 2 rather. Two, uh, 3 times 7 is another 21, plus that 2 is 23. Bring down the 3, carry the 2 again. 3 times 7 is 21, plus that carried 2 is also 3. Carry the 2. 3 times 2 is 6, plus that 2 would give me 8. There were three places after the decimal, one, two, three. So my decimal goes in one, two, three. Four times 4.71. 4 4.71 uh, 4 times four. Four times one is four. Four times seven is 28. So I bring down the eight, carry the two. 
4 times 4 is 16, plus 2 is 18. There were two places after the decimal, so there's two places after the decimal in my answer. 3.339 times 5. So 5 times 9 is 45. Bring down the 5, carry the 4. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 4, which is 19. Carry the 1. 5 times 3 is 15, plus that 1 is 16. Carry the 1. 5 times 3 is 15, plus the 1 is 16. And take a look at my answer. There were three places after the decimal in my factor, so there's three places after the decimal in my product. Last one, 7 times 0 0.4. So I'm going to put 0 0.4 times 7. 7 times 4 is 28. Carry the 2. 7 times 0 is 0, plus 2 is 2. And since there was one place after the decimal in my factor, there's one place after the decimal in my product. So now I'm going to ask that you go ahead and you pause the screen right now, pause this video, try out these bottom five problems, and then go ahead and press play when you're ready. Okay, so if I stack these up and I start multiplying out, I should be getting 16 plus 80. That gets me 0.96, and I know it's 0.96 because there was two places after the decimal, so there should be two here. The next one, after getting stacked, doing my traditional multiplication or however you are doing your multiplication, the answer should be 41.75. 30 times 4.8. hundred forty four now that ends up becoming hundred forty four point zero but we know we don't really need the point zero at the end so one forty four would be the best answer the next one we get zero point one one zero or just zero point one one and the last one one seventy one point one awesome all right, so now a decimal times a decimal. So here it says multiply the values traditionally. So again, whatever method you want to use for multiplying, use it. Then determine the total number of place values that are after both decimals and after the decimals in both factors. So previously there was just one factor that had numbers after the decimal. These are going to have both. So what we do is we find the total number of place values. The decimal in your product should have that many places after the decimal. So for example here, if I want to do 1.4 times 3.12, I stack them up traditionally as I normally would. I'm going to do my multiplication. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 1 is 1. I'm sorry, 4. 4 times 3 is 12. Now to multiply my, ten, my 1, I'm going to put a 0 placeholder. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. I go and I add these up. But now my decimal is not going to go just two places out. Look, one, two. There's an additional place after the decimal, three. So after I add these all up, look what I do. I put my decimal three places in. So my answer is now 4.368. Next one. I'm going to stack these up like normal. I would multiply everything out. And then look what happens here. One, two, three, four. My decimal would go in one, two, three, four into that spot there. We know we technically don't need the zero at the end. So the simplest answer would be 10.737. All right, so now for these problems, it's really not about practicing the multiplication. It's making sure we know how many places in the decimal needs to go in the final answer. So stacking this up, 8.65 times 2.4, doing the math. Right? The math is not the difficult part here. After I add these up, could you tell me how many places my decimal should go in? One, two, three. So after I add these up, my decimal should go three places in. What's the best answer for this problem? It would be 20.76. In the next one, if I stack these up, I do my multiplication. Again, that part should be the easy part. After I add these up, how many places in should I put the decimal here? One, two, three, four. So after I add them up, look where I put my decimal, four places in. Next one, 4.25 times 4.71, same idea. After I do all of the math, how many place values should my decimal go in from the right? 
one, two, three, four. And so that's what my answer would be, 20.0175. Next one, stack them up. How many places in should my decimal go here? One, two, three, four. And this last one, 0 0.7 times 0 0.4. Stack them up, do the multiplying. Notice there's two places after the decimal, one, two. And so there's two places after the decimal here. I encourage you to go ahead and pause your screen and try out these bottom five problems on your own and then press play and see how you did. Go for it. All right, hopefully you're pressing play. I'm gonna do one giant reveal so you can check your answers. To put the simplified answer for all these problems, the, la the first one here at the bottom really would just be one as a final answer. Over here, the fourth one would just be 0 0.011. Sorry for my bad writing. And the rest are pretty straightforward. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.